Hi, this video is an addendum to the logistic regression uh, model development process. When we developed the logistic regression model, we saw one of the visualization pattern for age and the pattern was something like this, wherein we said that, okay, here we have the response rate decreasing. And one of the transformation we thought we can do is they create a mirror image and create a derived age variable from it. And the equation that we used was something of this. If the age is greater than 43, then we said the age be 43 minus actual age minus 43. So this component gave us how much years it is above 43 and that much we reduced from 43 to create a mirror image kind of thing. So it would have given us something like this. Something of this kind of a mirror image and that's what we try to bring in into the model. Now I'm going to explain another concept of how categorical variables can be brought into model when you have say let me create a pattern. It is all on ink. Assume you have got some pattern like this. How do you get and assume this is a perfect trend. How do you get such categorical variables? Because the trend is not a proper proper linear and you cannot just simply use the mirror image concept also in this case. So there is a concept which is called weight of evidence. From the given trend, probably you would have created buckets which are something like this. This would be one bucket. This would have been your another bucket. Then this would be a third bin. Then this would be a fourth bin. And then this is the final bin. You would have created bins and you would have got the binned variable in the model. In that case, you would end up with six or seven categories. However, the most common approach which many companies now follow to get these kind of variables is called the weight of evidence concept. So let me explain how we can apply the weight of evidence concept on the age variable in our model. So here it's very clear that we would have done binning, which is say this and this would be one bin. This and this would be say second bin. This and this is third bin. This is my fourth bin. This is fifth bucket and this is sixth bucket binning slabbing bucketing these terminologies are interchangeably used so assume these are the uh, six buckets that we used to create so something of this kind of if else logic we would typically write to create the bins age less than equal to 28 then 21 to 28 else age less than 33 29 to 33 else age less than 40 then 34 to 40, 41 to 55, 50, 51 and the last age bucket. So this would create the five buckets. So let me just run this. So our buckets are created. Then probably we can do a cross tab between the bin and the target and we will get this kind of output. For each bucket, how many zeros are there? How many ones? We take this data copy paste in excel so i already have done that aspect here in the calculation so i've just copy pasted this part of data and nicely formatted zero i've said nr equal to zero nr for non-responders r equal to one r for responders these are my age buckets i've just labeled it nicely Using this data, I am first computing the total number of customers, which is nothing but sum of these two is equal to 
total number of customers. So all rows I have computed the total number of customers. Percentage NR. Let's understand the calculation. 19.1. How do we get this percentage? It is actually a ratio of if you see the formula D4 by D10. So basically 1845 divided by number of customers here. Similarly, this formula is D5 divided by 9679. So that is uh, the denominator is the total number of non responders in this case. Likewise, percentage responders is computed, which is 58 divided by 58 divided by 448. So if you see these two cells get highlighted likewise for them now weight of evidence is log of percentage of non responders divided by percentage of responders in the given bucket you can even take this as log of percentage responders divided by percentage non responders it is okay either you take ratio of non responders by responders or responders by non-responders the only difference is going to be in the sign for example i have here taken log of non-responders divided by responders and i have multiplied by 100 because otherwise the numbers will come in decimals okay just in case you don't take that as a ratio i just show one calculation here this divided by this and i just multiply by 100 because i want to see numbers you see that's the sign changes nothing else okay so here we are going to take this as a calculation okay i now take the compute the response rate what is response rate response rate is number of responders divided by total number of customers so if you see the calculation it is 58 divided by 1903 similarly if you do this calculation this is the kind of ratio you get in logistic what we are trying to do we are trying to fit a linear trend between log odds and the variable so here i can now compute the log odds so let me just compute log odds equal to ln p divided by 1 minus p bracket and one more bracket this is the number this is the log odds We have computed the response rate. Now, what we have to do is we have to see a relationship between the log odds and the variable. But the variable is now transformed into a new derived variable, which is the weight of evidence. So, what it means is this category I am now representing by the number 38.69. This category I am now representing by the number 23.90. So I need to see a relationship between this and this variable. In the graph here, I have done the relation between weight of evidence and response rate. Let me change it. This is a scatter plot between weight of evidence and log odds. This is the linear fitment. These are the actual values. I have fitted a linear trend on this can you see the r square is coming as a perfect one so the approach which industry follows is when you have a categorical variable you convert the categorical variables into weight of evidence and then use those weight of evidence which means now i have to take these values 
into my equation. How do I take these values into my equation? Let's go back to our code. I wrote this if else for creating buckets, but now I'll use the same if else combination. I have said my data dollar age bin w o e. I'm now creating a new variable, which is the weight of evidence variable, and I'm putting condition less than equal to 28. Instead of putting a categorical value, I'm now putting a value which is 38.69. From where did I get this value? For 21 to 28 category, the WOE is 38.69. So I'm taking this value and putting it here. If else age is less than 33, I'm taking 23.90. Likewise, minus 7.8, minus 6.8, minus 2. Point, and final else element. So this is what I'm going to now put into our model. Let me run this step. Okay, WOE is created. Age bin WOE. Okay, and please follow some uh, sensible naming convention so that you can quickly see from the naming convention that it is a bucketed variable and bucket converted to weight of evidence. Okay, now when we bring this variable in a model, so here instead of bringing age bin or age transformed, I'm now going to take age bin WOE if you would have got it as a categorical variable what would have happened you would have got how many categories we created here six you would have got five buckets but because we have converted it into WOE when I run this piece of code and then see my logic I get only one beta estimate. Now, how do you see whether this estimate is correct or wrong? It is a negative sign. How do you ensure the sign is correct? So again, go back to your Excel graph. Here, 38, 23, minus, minus. When the value is negative, you've got a higher response rate. When the value is positive, you've got a lower response rate, which means it's like an inverse correlation kind of a thing. Because it is an inverse, the beta should be negative. The variable is coming with the right sign. Okay. Once you get this variable, similarly, when you do validation, you will have to take the same logic. You should actually copy paste. I have already done the copy paste and then probably we have to put it in our validation piece of the code in validation you have to take the same numbers now you should not change the values you should it should not happen that you take the validation data on validation again create the cross tab go and create Excel and create a new WA you have to take the weight of evidence values which you have created in the dev sample Okay, the same values which were there in dev sample, I have taken those numbers, same buckets, and I'm directly going to apply on the validation sample. And then you use that variable. So I got my age bin WOE. So is the code is already there here with the age bin WOE. We have to run this, see the summary. you get your weight of evidence. You can copy paste this entire table and probably I'll put it here. Somewhere here, I'll put it weight of evidence. And then you can again do the beta ratio test that we have already done. Like I've taken this for our validation sample. Similarly, You can take this output of the development sample. And do the beta testing. The approach then remains the same validation ratio between variables and so forth. So conclusion is 
categorical variables when continuous variable you are converting categories or for that matter even categorical variables what i mean is this variable like here we have created occupation as two buckets three buckets two are displayed one is the baseline so if categorical variables have to be brought into model the industry approach today is rather than use the three buckets or five buckets the industry approach is compute the woe use the woe value in the model the moment i bring woe these two categories i'll not get two intercepts i'll get only one intercept okay so that's a small addendum which i wanted to explain on weight of evidence rest of the process remains same you have to when you are building the model you have to check your multi collinearity and because now it is become a continuous variable it becomes much more easy to check the multi collinearity when the model is built you have to do your rank ordering check goodness of fit test concordance gini index auc rocr all these steps remain same for development sample for validation you have to build the model on the validation base you have to do the beta ratios here i have the older output only where i have not taken the weight of evidence but the beta ratio is basically you compute you take the development variable estimates you take the validation estimates and then you do dev divided by val dev divided by val for each of them so you get your beta ratios and when you get the beta ratios you have to ensure the values of these beta ratios are between 0.5 and 2 ideally these ratios should be closer to 1 i would prefer the fluctuation should not be more than it should not be outside the range of 0.8 to 1.2 but however many people do allow a range of 0.5 to 2 okay once the beta ratio on the validation is done next steps are check the rank ordering on the validation model check the case statistics check other model performance measures like lift chart gini coefficient auc classification error couple of them i have not listed here but whichever measures you are taking you have to test all of them compare with the validation sample that is on the validation just in case the validation and development don't meet or probably the variance or the deviation of the validation output from the development is more than say 5% ideally it should not be more than 5% but max you can tolerate up to 10% what it means is rank ordering in development is coming 45 but in validation it is coming 39 the difference is more than 10% 10% deviation would be 45 minus 4.5 but you are getting 39 don't accept that model the validation case in that case should be closer to 42 43 44 it should be very close to the development if the deviation is more than 10 percentage you have to see which variable may need further tweaking similarly you can see for other statistics like model performance measures like lift chart or ks whichever you consider is the important thing those statistics you should not allow more than 10 percentage deviation for example concordance concordance in development has come 80 validation cannot be 70 validation has to be around 77 78 okay having done final test is on the hold out sample why is hold out sample kept separate when you do development and you test on validation if your validation performance is not meeting the with development what do you do you go and tweak the development rebuild the model again you do similar tweaking on validation again you compare 
which means in the model development process the model has directly or indirectly seen both the sample which is dev and val and finally you are accepting that model only which is actually holding both on dev and val so long as it was not holding on both of them you are continuously tweaking doing back and forth between model development and model evaluation validation process how do you ensure that this model will hold on a data set which is unseen completely unseen and that's the reason a holdout data set is kept aside you have to ensure that this data set is not used in your entire back and forth between dev and well okay this data set should be used only when you have finalized dev and well and then used on the holdout on holdout rank ordering statistics should be very close to your dev well and if that happens you can finally say your model is completely built and then you can roll it out for deployment okay so that's the last step so these steps i'm not doing it incomplete the validation hold out the codes are available with you this you have to do as a practice assignment you have to keep doing back and forth and complete the model and ensure that the final output on the hold out is meet matching very much with your dev again plus or minus 5% 7% deviation is acceptable okay as a quick lab assignment what i would expect is visualization is a important step so you should do some visualizations between say balance and target score and target you should do business visualization chart as well as the scatter plot which is continuous variable of balance with respect to the log odds second is you have to check the model performance which i already mentioned i am not doing you have to do as part of your own practice and check the model performance on the holdout sample thank you